So, uh, with your permission, sir, I would like to record this meeting. Sure, sure. Please go ahead. Yeah. So, well, thanks, uh, Praveen. Recording in progress. Yeah. Thanks, Praveen, for that introduction. And I would thank Rosh, uh, Praveen, and uh, Superna for organizing this. You have been very cooperative. I requested a couple of times uh, so that we all learn as to what is uh, Foundation One. And we have been sending Foundation One, and we've always been referring patients that this is the... Uh, the standard, if at all, if any genetic test you need to do, you need to send for foundation one to get the best uh, genomic profiling. So let us see uh, how far it is true and why we say so. And what is the difference between the foundation one, which is there, uh, and uh, the, the existing lot of genetic tests being there, offered from each and every lab uh, from a small corner of the country, uh, so what are the differences between these testing? So let us uh, learn each of the slides. Each slides are very educative. And we being clinicians uh, have some difficulties in understanding the genomic part of it, but we can try and correlate and understand and put in clinical perspective. So, so you can look into the, the, the title is Genomic Sequence Profiling Using Foundation Medicine and Its Clinical Utility. So the very word... Uh, you can see is genomic sequence profiling. So you are looking into the complete uh, profile of a single gene. You are not just looking into a specific hotspot. You are trying to read the complete gene. So that is what the name means. So we will have this uh, presentation in these three subheadings in this sequence. Uh, we initially will understand how a molecular test has evolved and then uh, how foundation medicine has uh, begun and how it has developed now, also including immuno-oncology targets and uh, the predictive markers and then the clinical utility, how we can put uh, something that is there in the lab, uh, what we call as from bench to bedside or from lab to practice and how to make out sense of those genomic aberrations and those multiple colors which you see in the charts. So let us have some understanding in practice. So, so this is a, a very basic slide and I think I'll be discussing the whole concept based on this slide. So we need to understand the difference between hotspot panel versus a comprehensive genomic profile. So hotspot is I am looking into a particular alteration in a particular gene. For example, I am looking into exon 19 deletion. I am looking only into deletion in that exon 19 only. I am not looking into the other abnormalities of exon 19. Here you can see exon 3 up. So I am looking only into a known specific mutation. So that is uh, uh, what is hotspot. So I know what is the target and I look only into the target and that is the hotspot approach. Whereas what a comprehensive genomic profile does is I know where the abnormality is. For example, I want to look into exon 19. I look into the exon 19 to whatever sequence uh, uh, problem it has, whether it is deletion, alteration, or it's amplification. So I'll be able to understand if there is something else, somewhere else. So I'll be able to understand the final alteration, not only in those hotspot areas, but also in the non-hotspot areas. So so the comprehensive genomic profiling approach is sequences coding regions of selected genes in their entirety. I'm not looking into a known uh, defect or a known mutation in a targeted gene, but I am looking into the whole gene in its entirety, whether it has uh, mutated at one side or other sides, the whole gene I'll be able to see. So, this is how uh, a foundation medicine CGP works. It's basically, uh, it is a genomic profiling approach of testing all of the known clinically relevant cancer genes for all classes of alterations. So this is how uh, FMI picks up. And so, so these are the existing uh, uh, genetic tests what we have in lab and these are the finer differences. So you can look into the top row. These are the four classical genetic abnormalities uh, we have uh, whenever we pick into 
uh, any genetic test. So, for example, uh, we look into base pair substitution, number one. So, we have BRAF B600E is a classical example. Then we have insertions and deletion. We have exon 19 deletion, which is a classical example. Copy number alterations. Uh, we have HER2 being there, and we have rearrangements uh, that, is, uh, that is being there. So we have ALK translocation, we have ROS mutation, and so on. So I'll be uh, saying the examples in, in further on. So we have this capillary electrophoresis, which picks up only base pair substitutions and insertions and deletions. And then mass spectrometry, similar. And then IHC can pick up only copy number alterations. It won't be able to detect uh, an underlying genetic abnormality. For example, a BRA V600E, I want to look into. I cannot have an IHC. I can only look into an ALK IHC, which has been there, or a, or a HER2 IHC, which is there. It's a protein that is expressed on the surface itself. Similarly, a fish can detect only copy number. For example, I can do a fish for HER2. I can't do a, a fish for a, a V600E mutation or exon 19. Similarly, I can do a PCR for a point mutation. Uh, uh, identifying a particular target like an exon 19 or an exon 21 deletion, but not copy number. Therefore, we don't do fish. Uh, we don't do a PCR for an ALK translocation or a, a ROS mutation. We do a fish for them. And then we have the droplet PCR and then the hotspot NGS. So majority of the labs, uh, what we have in India are offering what is known as hotspot NGS. They look into, uh, there is a battery of tests where uh, they look into exon 19 deletion, then they have exon 21, L858R, uh, and that's the way. And they look into T790M. So these are the very few mutations they look into, and then we come up with an answer that there is no EGF mutation. So we will not uh, look into the uh, other genes like exon 18 or uh, also the other abnormalities that is there, for example, an amplification or final other mutations we don't look into. So. Uh, so if you have a comprehensive genomic uh, profiling by FMI, so I'll be able to look into base pair substitutions, insertion, deletion, copy number alterations, and also rearrangement. So all these four are covered if I do a comprehensive genomic profiling and just not a hotspot in case. So, so transforming genomic data into real life results is important. So uh, if you look into foundation medicine, uh, it, it's a market-leading comprehensive genomic profiling services for cancer in the world. So it was founded in Cambridge in 2010 in USA. And then uh, uh, the national coverage by Medicare and numerous health insurances have been there. So you don't get coverage with all these tests, uh, whether private or common, but if you have a FMI, uh, they are approved in some private insurances. And then we have an evidence of more than uh, 2 lakh clinical cases profiled and uh, 30 plus biopharma partners are there and more than 3 lakh clinical cases being reported, uh, clinical reports being issued. Such a huge uh, bank of data on mutations and they have had multiple publications which I'll be saying uh, just further on. So the comprehensive genomic profiling approach translates genomic data into clinically actionable knowledge. So the initially is the hybrid capture by NGS uh, it identifies relevant genomic alterations in a sample. And then the data aggregation analysis allows translation of NGS into information, into actionable knowledge. And then uh, scientific clinical expert review aids in uh, clinical decision making and uh, quality control uh, always being there. And it suggests the clinician what drug to be given for this particular mutation. So if you look into... Uh, classical uh, FMI report, it has these three components. So the interpretive, interpretative uh, content in professional services section, if you look into the therapy, so we have three types of mutation, three types of genetic uh, uh, abnormalities. One is those uh, therapies with clinical benefit in the particular tumor type. For example, I got ALK mutation in lung cancer or EGFR mutation in lung cancer. I know we have a, a sufficient evidence uh, of EGFR in lung cancer, and that is one mutation. Another one is therapies with clinical benefit in other tumor types. For example, in a breast cancer or a liver cancer, I found an ALK mutation. Then that's quite unusual, but it has clinical benefit, but in, not in this particular tumor type. 
similarly we have uh, uh, clinical trials listed with simple page number references which are there lower down so uh, you get all these three uh, components in any cgp reporting from foundation one so cgp starts with the assessment of genomic alteration so if you look into the examples of base substitutions is grp6 and re insertion deletions is exon 19 deletion copy number alteration is her2 and rearrangements is alp fusion and now we have uh, immunotherapy markers so uh, cancer immunotherapy markers uh, right now we have msi tmb and so on so we have pdl1 and others are mainly by ilc but if you look into the genetic makeup it is tumor mutation burden microsatellite instability so these will help us to choose uh, whether this particular tumor will respond to io or not so so what is the scope so what is the portfolio of fmi uh, testing you can see uh, the best is to get adequate tissue and if i have a tissue uh, the way to preserve is uh, neutral buffer 10% neutral uh, formalin buffer and then uh, formalin fixed paraffin embedded specimens are the best way uh, fresh frozen is another way but it is difficult to have it uh, uh, in house and the number of genes it includes in all solid tumors around 324 odd dna is what you have to remember and then uh, the cancer immunotherapy biomarkers uh, that they include are msi and tmb and the companion diagnostic is fti approved and it has around 17 targeted therapies for it so we also have foundation one for uh, liquid biopsy it has peripheral whole blood and 70 uh, dna abnormalities uh, genes it, uh, it picks up and it does pick up uh, msi2 and then we have for hematological malignancies and sarcomas uh, we have we can have bone marrow specimens along with uh, uh, ffp and peripheral blood 406 uh, dna and 265 rna uh, genetic abnormalities it picks up it does pick up both msi and tmb so we have both solid biopsies liquid biopsy both in hematological and also both solid tumors and hematological malignancies then coming on to the foundation medicine the cgp process so this is how the sequence goes on the physician orders and the pathologist uh, looks into it then from lab it goes to the com com computational pipeline and then informatics and then the report is then print a few after the proper molecular uh, uh, interpretation and so on so this is a hybrid capture you can see overlapping probes provide thorough coverage and sensitivity so you have an excellent sensitivity uh, of more than 95% uh, multiple genes as well and uh, 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 the more comprehensive coverage uh, than the hot spot because you're looking into the gene and in its entirety you can see the pcr based ngs it, it just reaches specific areas it doesn't pick up large deletions whereas the hybrid capture ngs picks up it looks into the entirety and picks up minor mutations and also large deletions as well so this is an example of how a large deletion can be missed by a hot spot and it is promptly picked up picked up by fmi so these large deletions are usually missed and that's the reason why at times we see an exon 19 deletion not being there and when you send per fmi you get it in place so detect not only fusions but but fusion variants and partners because we know that uh, uh nearing sarcoma ews r1 uh, it's a very promiscuous gene and uh, uh, you can uh, have different partners uh, with the ews r1 gene so it's not it's very important to to, to know the other partners too so this is the validation for all the four you can see the uh, sensitivity and specificity and of course the positive predictive value for all the four types base substitution insertion deletion copy number alteration and gene fusions so for for all of them uh, the sensitivity is above 90% uh, and the positive predictive value is nearly 99% which is excellent then so this is the more comprehensive coverage than hotspot and single market is this is important 17% extra it picks up uh, egf for exon 19 deletion versus hotspot in lung and you have an evidence for it so extra 22% egf for point mutation which is misrepresented test 15% extra her to mutation 26% of lung ncc and genes and 35% alk fusion is extra picked up and 50% of target mutations were missed using hotspot ngs without supplemental fish so this is very important so the routine 
generic test which we send which are basically a hot spot ng uh, ngs really misses nearly 25 to 30 50% patients who are otherwise uh, harboring uh, particular mutations we have seen in our clinical practice where an egfr negative patient on a tki does so well uh, uh, has a good pfs of more than 2 years so we 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 think how how is a anti egfr working in a in a patient who has an egfr wild type that is because we are not sensitive enough to pick up this particular mutation so so you can see the numbers uh, the extra 17% 22% of egfr is extra picked up and 15% of her2 which you were saying her to negative uh, we've seen a lot of hormone receptor positive patients on hormonal therapy they keep progressing on uh, adjuvant hormonal therapy and they don't respond and that's that, that's because uh, not the biology it is that we are missing about 15% of hurto mutation if i do by fission iis so whenever feasible whenever in doubt we must always try and get a comprehensive genomic profiling done so the fmi has uh, co-authored over 337 publications from 2011 to 2018 and now the publications are coming up both in solid liquid and also in the immuno oncology space so this is some study where we have a pan negative nsclc uh, study of uh, comprehensive uh, genomic profiling living patients with adequate uh, performance rate of light smoking and entirely negative prior testing prior testing must have included egfr her2 ras and ras uh, brap map kinase pick cca akt hot spot mutation testing multiplex sizing assays were done fusions involving al cross fit were all Uh, done previous tests so more than 70% needed multiple biopsies to complete testing prior to comprehensive genome profiling so this is uh, another challenge which we face in real world practice to have adequate tissue so we know uh, tissue is an issue so uh, these are the numbers uh, you can see you have uh, total 31 patients in that uh, who were negative for all mutations when you did with your standard uh, uh, tests and you still found 26% of them having genomic alterations with targeted therapy as per ncsn guidelines big number 26% and then another 39% had genomic alterations with targeted agent available on or off a clinical trial so we are missing more than 50% of pan negative patients having some mutations and at least one fourth of them would have some targetable mutations therefore if your clinical suspicion a young female never smoker or a never smoker male is there in front of you is pan negative and is not doing that well with chemotherapy you must always look into an underlying uh, uh, uh mutation what we say which is missed by these hot spot tests so uh, i think in these select patients where there is a strong clinical suspicion or the patient has progressed on conventional therapies where we are in desperate need of a target fmi is the way to rescue so these are the uh, data we have uh, this is uh, when framing the treatment plan for your uh, for advanced nsclc the whole picture is important establish this logical subtype recommend egfr r testing category 1 and then single testing misses up to 35% of alk and 17% of egfr alterations so big number 35 and 17 hot spot ngs 50% of targetable alterations can be missed the cgp detects almost all sorts of mutations so if i do a single testing with pcr i can pick up only egfr uh, uh, and 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 if i do a single test i would be missing nearly 35% of alk if i do a hot spot you can see Are missing completely? Alk, EGFR, significant. Seventeen percent are missing. BRAF, ERBB, I'll be picking up, but RET and ROS are missing. So, if we do a CGP, for which I need to have adequate tissue, then I wouldn't be missing any one of these. So, the predictive biomarkers for IO is uh, uh, is the present day. The TMB and MSI we have been speaking in multiple uh, seminars, and you can see uh, the genomic alterations which we have, which we have. for uh, tumor mutation of burden so all genomic alterations remove germline polymorphisms removes known cancer drivers extrapolate to whole genome and that that constitutes tmb 
so if you have more tumor mutations more mutation if you have a single driver uh, like an egfr mutation you won't have a high tmd because you have a single driver and uh, there is no need for having multiple mutations so if you have no driver mutation then when you have a higher tmd then they are responsive to immunotherapy so less so you can remember these numbers less than 5 5 6 to 19 and more than 20 so uh, tmd high from fmi is uh, more than 20 mutations per mb so we can remember this number 20 So this is the analysis of thousand uh, of one lakh uh, human cancer genomes reveals the landscape of TMB. These results show that uh, CGP assay targeting 1.1 mili uh, uh, MB of coding genome can accurately assess TMB compared with sequencing the whole genome. So CGP assay 1.1 MB of coding genome can accurately assess TMB with sequencing the whole genome. Using this method, we can find that many diseases. I just have a substantial portion of patients with high TMB. So these is the tumors with the MMR deficiency. So we know if there is a MSI high patient, uh, these patients have a lot of uh, microsatellite instability and they are susceptible to immunotherapy. And you can see the survival probability uh, in the y-axis in colorectal cancers. Uh, uh, and then uh, if you have an MSI high and a BRAF while that is in the top that is green. And then MSA high with BRAF mutant even here, IO works, and we must offer IO in these patients than a BRAF. And then MSA uh, low, MSS and BRAF wild type does poor, and you have MSS and BRAF mutant does the poorest. This is the colorectal uh, cancer specific survival rates. And then uh, if you look into the overall survival, the, the graphs are similar. Uh, 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 MSA with coexisting mutation. Like we have reduces the responses. So in 30th November 2017, uh, FDA approved uh, Foundation Medicine as a companion diagnostic test. The CGP is there. So what is uh, actionability? What is utility? What are the clinical perspective? Does it mean that if I have a mutation, uh, uh, does it help me in choosing a drug? And if I give, if I target that particular mutation, will it be productive? So are all mutations driver mutations, or they are just passenger and they are just existing? So actionable is the reasonable for clinician to change treatment approach based on the result, and clinical utility is outcome improved is ex- improvement is expected. So you can look into the actionability of uh, foundation one uh, uh, of uh, uh, HC based liquid biopsy, and uh, you can see forty nine percent is the percentage of patients who have more than one genetic mutation associated with fda approved drug in tumor type so uh, just to put in perspective uh, we have this impact data uh, uh, where they did tumor profiling performed in 1000 odd, odd patients uh, from md anderson with objective to optimize selection of targeted agents for patients being considered for phase 1 clinical trial participation So in this, there were consecutive patients uh, from phase one clinical trial. Molecular and IHC profiling was performed uh, uh, initially, and then the patients whose tumor had a molecular aberration were preferably treated on a clinical trial with a mass targeted agent when available. So the the definition of mass targeted therapy was the treatment with a the targeted therapy if a drug was known to inhibit the aberration of a low uh, nanomole concentration or if the antibody targeted. the alteration product the results were that the tumor molecular profiling was uh, ordered in uh, 1436 patients 82% of them had uh, more than one aberration so out of uh, uh, 1179 patients who had more than one aberration 77.5% had more than one targetable mutation of these 914 patients Two uh, seventy-seven patients with targetable molecular aberrations did not receive evaluable treatment. So overall, six uh, thirty-seven patients had more than one targetable molecular alterations and received treatment. So if you can do a CGP, you can uh, nearly target nearly seventy percent of patients uh, who will have some alteration, and you can target seventy percent of those patients who uh, have targetable mutation. So. 
the actionability of uh, cgp is the profiler 1 trial so profiler 1 is one of the largest uh, trial assessing high throughput uh, genomic analysis for large varieties of cancer over 50% of tumors presented with molecular alteration that was potentially actionable profiler 2 is planned to compare ac uh, academic gene panel with foundation medicine so if you look into the clinical utility are we there so we have this famous shiva trial uh, what they did was uh, it's it's an open labeled uh, randomized control phase 2 uh, shiva trial was done at eight french academic centers the molecular profile of each patient's tumor was established with the biopsy and they looked into specific uh, molecular pathways especially the hormone receptor the pic3ca akt mtor pathway the raf mec pathway were included and they uh, did match with the uh, 10 regimens including 11 available molecular targeted agents so the treatment in both groups were in accordance with the uh, approved product information and standard practice uh, tools so the primary endpoint was pfs in the igt population so the use of uh, molecular targeted agents outside their indications does not uh, improve pfs compared with the treatment of physicians choice so if uh, if i get an mtor mutation Uh, suppose say it's sarcoma so targeting this mtor with everolimus was not beneficial so if i find a, 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 we know in kidney cancer targeting mtor is beneficial but if i find an atypical mutation elsewhere then targeting these uh, uh, with uh, the targeted match drugs were not beneficial uh, for example i had uh, 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 a sarcoma with a her2 mutation where i did trastuzuma it did not benefit so this was basically a negative trial to show that uh, uh, if i have a mutation which is not specific for that organ or which is not a driver mutation targeting those uh, surprisingly picked up mutations were not productive that's what the shiva trial said but it had its shortcomings so what were the lessons learned from shiva so first uh, patients with cancer often have several molecular alterations and many patients are unlikely to respond to monotherapy in patients with pic 3 ca uh, with pic pi key pi 3 k akt mtor pathway abnormalities uh, results show significantly less frequent responses to monotherapy second everolimus weakly affects the pi 3 k akt mtor pathway and patients with uh, rictal alterations uh, which would activate the mtor 2 complex were to be matched with everolimus despite the possibility that mtor one inhibition could uh, uh, hyperactive pathway so third many patients had hormone receptor abnormalities response to hormone monotherapy in treated patients with advanced diseases unlikely so if i have a sarcoma with a er positivity i target them it is not going to benefit fourth some matches were incorrect imatinib uh, were, and it was a ineffective ret inhibitor that was mass for ret alterations so finally uh, patients randomly assigned to target therapy were treated using a predefined algorithm by contrast with the control group who were assigned therapy by the physician because physicians could take into consideration the comorbidities and also um, they could choose a drug as per the patient so that was at once so the control arm was stronger that that's what they said so but the conclusion is if i randomly pick up some mutation in a atypical cancer especially the mtor mutation or the pi3k pathway Uh, just targeting an mtor and a sarcoma or a medullary carcinoma thyroid would be productive for me so that's what the shiva trial basically said so then uh, what is the impact of a biomarker based uh, strategy uh, uh, this is a meta analysis which said that a personal strategy was independent predictor of better response rate so if i can pick up a targeted mutation so we can definitely improve the response rates pfs os and this was a big meta analysis uh, which is there and it was uh, nearly uh, the analysis of experimental arms in all uh, 112 registration trials with 38000 odd patients and uh, uh, this uh, suggested that if i can use a personalized therapy based on the specific mutation there is a statistically significant improvement in response rates progression free survival and also overall survival we can see the median improvement 19.3 versus 13.5 months the treatment and mortality rate was similar for personalized and non personalized trial so this is a meta analysis that said that personalized cancer therapy is really productive 
It includes response rates, PFS, and OS, which had 38,000 outcomes. So similar representation, if I can give a personal cancer therapy in this meta-analysis, you can see uh, the response rates, the progression free survival, and the overall survival all are better if I can give uh, the mass targeted therapy for this particular mutation. So we have a big meta-analysis of over 30,000 patients. So similar thing again showed the survival was superior if I can give a match drug. This is the Profiler 1 study. Uh, the patients who received recommended molecular targeted agents have better overall survival than who did not. You can see at three years and five years, there is statistically significant difference in survival. So 2017 was a pivotal year. So uh, uh, we were always having a concept that uh, I need to have uh, one mutation, which is organ specific. So EGFR should be there in lung cancer. Uh, I do uh, a HER2 mutation in breast cancer and stomach cancer. So now we have what is known as tissue agnostic indication. So if I have MSI high in any tumor, what we call as the basket trial, in any tumor, MSI high, IO works. Similarly, NTRK, any, NT, uh, any TRK fusion, any NTRK picked up, but irrespective of tissue, uh, uh, lerotectinib or entrectinib works. So this is what is the basket concept. So the umbrella concept is multiple mutations in a single tumor. The basket is single mutation in multiple cancers. So, so well uh, depicted. For example, we have a non-small cell lung cancer which has EGFR, AL, CrossMet. So one organ, multiple mutations. And then we have single mutation in multiple organs. For example, MSI high, it can be there in any organ, full on endometrium and so on. So this is the battle. So the, we are slowly changing from a tissue-based uh, testing. So we initially had the, uh, the organ of origin, then we had tissue adenose famous, and now we are looking into the mutation, and now we are going into what is known as a tissue agnostic approach. MSI high irrespective of histology, irrespective of the type of tumor. NTRK fusion positive irrespective of tumor. So these are the tissue agnostic indications uh, which we have. So this is the NTRK which I was uh, seeing, you can see that even though its uh, total number is less, it can be present practically in any organ, whether it is pediatric or adult, you can see NTRK fusion in any, any cancer, but they are rare. So if you give a TRK inhibitor like erotractinib or entractinib, it's highly productive and the responses are just dramatic. So these are the trial designs for entractinib and erotractinib. And you can just see uh, the responses. You can see uh, they did have pediatric patients. They had adolescent patients uh, uh, who are fusion positive, and they had uh, uh, objective response rates as a primary endpoint. And they had TRK fusion determined by uh, local laboratories. And the dosing was as per standard. Lerotrexanib was 100 milligram BD continuously. And you can see the responses, dramatic response, 76 percent responses irrespective of the site of tumor. If you have NTRK fusion present, you are assured with a response. 76% responses, tissue agnostic indication. And then this is the NCI matched the precision medicine uh, clinical trial. So even this also uh, 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 had four cohorts to enroll and uh, this also suggested that we must be using uh, personalized medicine for better responses and better survival. So, however, there have been, uh, we could see the Shiva trial where they said that randomly picking up mutation and targeting them, they may not be lone mutations, that may not be a driver mutation, that can be just a, a passenger mutation. So, targeting random mutation may not be productive, especially the PI3K, AKTM pathway. So, we see a lot of PICRCI mutation and multiple cancers, including TNBC or sarcomas, but targeting them are not productive because they may not be uh, targeted mutation. So it is very difficult to understand uh, whether it is a target or a driver mutation. But however, uh, with reasonable uh, the knowledge and the frequency of those mutations in those particular organ organs, we do offer uh, targeted drugs. So there are some thoughts where precision medicine is an illusion, but we have meta-analysis saying that if we can pick up a particular mutation, we'll be able to go. So the other ones are quite optimistic about it. So just to have a conclusion, uh, 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 
so in our clinical practice uh, uh, now without a genetic test whether it is uh, breast cancer or lung cancer or sarcoma uh, or a thyroid cancer we cannot think of having systemic therapy without understanding the genetic makeup of that because they are not just prognostic but a predictive it helps us to decide what treatment we have to give so uh, we must always look into an underlying target in that particular drug so that we can have a specific targetable therapy for that particular cancer so very importantly to have uh, uh, to pick up that particular mutation in that tissue is a challenge the challenge exists in uh, getting adequate tissue tissue is an issue if you have lung cancer definitely it is very difficult to get adequate tissue by ct guided biopsy or bronchoscopic biopsy so getting adequate tissue is a challenge secondly after having tissue processing it uh, with a proper 10% formalin buffer and then having a proper ffp uh, keeping the dna viable is another challenge and thirdly the labs where we send uh, they have crude methods of measurement like they measure by ihc for example even some labs do uh, egfr by ihc uh, and fish and so on so uh, uh, if i do a targeted pcl like a hot spot i'll be picking up only known mutations of known genes so we could we just saw the data that we'll be missing uh, uh, with these routine tests we'll be missing nearly 25 to 50% of times we'll be missing so we had a young female who was suspected to have some mutation all mutations are negative the chance that the patient will have the mutation is nearly 25% you are missing the underlying mutation so therefore whenever feasible so we must always uh, try for a whole exon sequencing what we know what we call as the comprehensive genomic profiling to have the best sensitivity specificity and the best positive predictive value so you can see that uh, the the foundation one uh, comprehensive genomic profiling picks up uh, 70 to 50% more targetable alterations than that of the conventional tests and it estimates msi and tnb2 very accurately so the future for oncology is targeted therapy and immunotherapy and if i have to select out which is the patient we're going to benefit having a proper uh, genetic test the comprehensive genomic profile, uh, profiling is a must without which i can't i can't know which tumor has to be treated with which drug so with this uh, 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 i would uh, thank everyone for their patient listening and i'll hand over back to uh, dr thank you